our lesson for February the 19th, 2017. Lesson 12. We're still in Unit 3, and the title of Unit 3 is The Birthing of a New Community. Our lesson title for this week is Celebrate Freedom. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 26. Our background scripture is also from the fifth chapter of Galatians, verses 1 through 17. And our printed text, a printed passage is the same. Galatians 5, verses 1 through 17. And our key verse. Brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Galatians 5, 13. Our lesson aim as a result of experience this lesson that the student should be able to do these things. To, first of all, to understand Paul's teaching about life in the Spirit as foundational for Christian holiness. Second, celebrate the Holy Spirit's presence in our life. And third, to embrace new ways of creating openness to the Spirit leading. Celebrate freedom. Under the Gospel, of Jesus Christ, we are brought into a state of liberty, wherein we are free from the yoke of the ceremonial law and from the curse of the moral law of Moses, so that we are no longer tied to the, ex to the observance of the one, nor tied up to the rigor of the other one which curse everyone that does not continue to do all things that is written within the law. In our lesson, we have to understand the background that there, was, there were Judaizing teachers, that these were teachers that came to Galatia where Paul had established the church and that they was teaching those new converts that though they had accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior but they had to also perform the laws of Moses to be truly saved. And so these teachers they was endeavoring to bring the Galatians back up under the law. And so to address this problem, the Apostle Paul states in verse 1 of our lesson where he says, Stand fast, therein the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast, therein in the liberty. This liberty lies in a freedom from sin. A freedom from the penalty and the condemnation and dominion of sin. Not from the indwelling of it, okay, because we still have a sin nature, but, but we have been freed from the penalty which was death, and then also we are free from the dominion, and we are being freed from the dominion and the habit of sin in our everyday life. So we see that being free from the dominion and the guilt and damning power of sin, that also we are free, the liberty in Christ frees a person from the captivity and tyranny of Satan, though not free from his temptations and insults, but we are free from being his slave. There is liberty from the law, from the ceremonial and the moral law as a covenant of works which nothing but the grace of Christ can take away. Is that 
we are not bound by the law. We are not condemned by the law. Christ has fulfilled all of the law so that whoever have put their faith in Christ as their Savior, that we are free from the penalties and, and the bondage of the law. And then we do not have to become again because of the, uh, of the liberties that we have to, to become uh, uh, slaves to the rights and customs and habits of the law. So we find in verses 2 through 4 where it reads, And behold, I, Paul, say to you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. That if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Here it is declared through the Apostle Paul that if if they be circumcised, Christ would profit them nothing. Now we have to understand that it is not just mere it's not just the mere act of circumcision which the apostle here is speaking about. But he is speaking of circumcision in the sense in which the Judaizing teachers who taught that except that those believers, those un-Jewish Gentile believers, except they were circumcised and kept the law of Moses, that they could not be saved. We find in Acts the 15 chapter and verse 1 tells, And certain men which came down from Judah taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So here Paul warns that he warns those Christians, those, those babes in Christ, that if they seek being justified by the law, or if they try to seek justification by the works of it, and if they submit to circumcision in this, in this sense as a means of justification, Paul declares to them that Christ would profit them nothing. And let them know, warns them that they are debtors to do the whole law. That Christ had become a no effect to them and that they were falling from grace. By them, if they were falling to the, to the trap of depending on the law to justify them, Christ would profit them nothing. We have to understand that though Jesus Christ is able to save to the other most, Yet there are multitudes whom he will profit nothing. There are multitudes who will not benefit from what he has done for all mankind. Why? Because all those who seek to be justified by the law do thereby render Christ of no effect to them. They saying, well, this... Christ's sacrificial death don't mean nothing. It wasn't good enough. It, it wasn't a total atonement. It wasn't a total uh, propitiation for sin. It's, that it's something that we need to do by our works. Then, then it would be fulfilled. No. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for the for the sins of the whole world. And what he did on Calvary was enough to save all mankind if they were, were by faith, not by works, 
but by faith depend and trust in him. And so and, and so we see that that by them building they they hopes on the law that that they forfeit all their hopes from Christ. For he would for Jesus would not be the savior of any who would not own and rely upon him as their only savior, as their only mean of salvation, not as part of it, but as the as the only means of salvation is in Christ Jesus. So that's where our dependence our, our dependency lies upon is that the cross of Jesus Christ. Our hope is built on nothing less but Christ and his righteousness, not on good works, not on uh, 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 keeping of the law, but all on Christ. We find in verses 5 and 6 of our lesson where it states, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. For we through the Spirit. Now, this is the characteristic of true Christians, of true believers. We believe and we have expectation. Of the salvation that was revealed to us only by the Holy Spirit aid. And that our hope of salvation is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that word hope, where we say our hope of salvation, that word hope is not useful, uh, wishful thinking. But it is a confident expectation. We are confident that that our self, that we are confident of salvation in Christ Jesus by faith, and it is not by our works, nor any conformity to the law, and there is no other hope of justification or righteousness except by faith. In Jesus Christ. Romans 1 16 and 17 states. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To the Jews first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We all are so familiar with the scripture, John 3.16, was it that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. It is by faith. It is by faith. And so we realize that it is by it is not by no external privileges or professions that will bring acceptance for us with God. It is only through faith in Jesus Christ. For God who made him who knew no sin to become a sin offering for us. That that the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we might become his righteousness that the righteousness of Jesus Christ would be imputed to our account not by works but by because of our faith our faith in the, the atoning shed blood of Jesus Christ and so and without a sincere faith in our Lord Jesus Christ a faith that when it is true, it is a working faith. It works by love, 
this faith works by love. First of all, love to God. Because we loved him because he first loved us. The scripture said that God commended his love towards us that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. It is not that it is not that we loved him, but but that he he loved us. Even when we was unlovable, that he loved us. And so by us realizing this, by us realizing that he loved us in spite of ourselves. That it makes our love for God even grows greater. And then not only for our love for God, but a love that is towards our brothers and sisters. This is what true working faith brings. We love him because he loved us. And we love those also who are begotten of him. Why? Because Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, love ye one another, even as I have loved you. And so now, and so, and so now, by the, by the Spirit of Christ, by the Holy Spirit, that, that if we would walk in the Spirit, that we would manifest the fruits of the Spirit. And the first fruit of the Spirit is love. And so we ought to have love towards God and towards our brothers and sisters, and towards one another. We have, we we ought to have love even for the unsaved. That that it should grieve us that knowing that in the state that they're in, if they do not come by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, that that they are doomed for eternal damnation. Verses seven through nine, and I. And our text states, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that called you. A little leaven the whole lump. Paul tells them that ye did run well. Here he reminds them of the good confession and zeal which they which they started off in this Christian race with that they were running well that they was and that they had their eyes fixed on on heaven's prize but their progress now has been hindered when they yielded to the influence which were not of God, but it was by those who who came, who came, who those uh, Judaizers who came to to hinder them, and, and 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 that and that they yielded to the influences which was not of God, and and omitted uh, uh, leaven that is not cast out. All will corrupt them. A little leaven leavened the whole loaf, Paul stated. They had started off in this Christian journey. Paul often used the example of this Christian walk of life as a race. It is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. It is a long distant race and and that we are to run this race run this race with our eyes towards the goal our eyes towards the finish line and and, and not be hindered with the things of, of this world or with the influence of those that come along and try to take away the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're told, it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily beset us and run this race in patience. Patience is a long race. Keeping our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ, 
on the pride. And so and so we ought to endure in this race and run it with with patience. And also we ought to be on guard and and, and lay aside all those things that hinder us. And that even in as we run this race, this this life as Christian, we need to be constant in prayer. That that we need to pray without ceasing. And then we need most importantly that we need to be familiar and study God's word. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so that when those false teachers, even today, we don't have the uh, uh, the, the Judaizers in our midst in the sense where, where they came up from Jerusalem, but we have those false teachers who try to add to the gospel of Christ. They, we have some that, you know, uh, 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 they uh, say, well, if you don't do this or you don't do that, that you're not saved. The Bible in John 3.16 says, if, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And so, and, and so that we need to be aware of that so that we can contend for the faith. So when those corrupt teachers come around, we won't be swayed. Our, our, our faith won't be weakened. Where, where we'll be in doubt about are we really saved. Where we be in doubt. Was the blood of Jesus enough? Do I need to add something to this by worshiping a certain day or not worshiping a certain day? About doing this, keeping the law or, or, or not keeping the law. We need to know for ourselves that we need to stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. Verses 10 through 12 states, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that trouble you shall bear his judgment. Whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease. I would they were even cut off which troubled you. Paul states, he said, I have confidence. Here the apostle, in spite of of the bad news that he had received. That here the Apostle Paul yet hopes that that through the blessing of God upon what he has written them, that by them observing this letter, that they might be brought, they might be brought to be of the same mind with him and to own and abide by that truth that truth, which is the liberty of the gospel, which he had preached to them, and that and those that had troubled them shall bear their judgment, whoever they might be. Galatians 1, verses 7 and 8 states, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. The gospel, the simplicity of the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried and rose the third day according to the scriptures and that he is seated at the right hand the exalted right hand of God and that we have a savior a savior that paid our debt in full 
that that we have a, a high priest that's right there in heaven that makes intercession for the saints and that and that he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to him by faith that is the simplicity of the gospel and Paul states is it be him or an angel or anybody else that come and preach anything contrary to that to let them be a curse that God will eternally curse that person and, and so we go to verses 13 through 17 of our text and it says for brethren we have been called unto liberty only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if we bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust, the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. We are warned not to use our liberty as an occasion for the flesh. The state in which we have been called to salvation is one of liberty. Liberty by the gospel consists in freedom from the mosaic yoke of the law, freedom, liberty from the penalty, dominion, in condemnation of sin. Freedom from being a slave. A slavish fear of sin. Fear. Perfect love casts out fear. We know that we don't have to be in fear. Wondering if 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 if, if we uh, slip up or, or, or might fall out of grace but now we have been liberated we have been liberated from them fear the word of God is a liberating thing the word of God we can find freedom and liberation and things to to enforce our mind Romans 8 1 said that there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus that we have been freed we have been freed from our the the guilt of our past and and, and, and and that and that we will be free from the those things that might happen in, in the future because because we realize in God's word that there is nothing that will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus things past things to come deaths heights nothing and so we have been free from that and, and so but with that and knowing that that we are uh, up under grace, God's unmerited favor, we are not to use that as an occasion and excuse for the flesh. Oh, we're quick in our own mind to say, well, we know that God is a forgiving God and God is a God of love and so you know, for, for, for us to walk in the lust of the flesh that God, he knows my heart. God, God will forgive me. Yes, God, God does know our heart. And, and God said that our heart is desperately wicked. And so because we have a merciful and a forgiving God, that is no excuse for us to use our liberty for the flesh. 
Many times, Christians won't admit it, but many times, Christians are, are, are willingly sin. And then, and, and, and then after the sin is over, then they figure that, that they can come back and ask God for, for, for his forgiveness. And then that God has, has to, has to. He's obligated to forgive them. We do not use our liberty as an occasion for the flesh. Because the flesh, the things of the flesh is contrary to the spirit of God. The works of the flesh is contrary to the fruits of the spirit. And so we have to, to, to realize that we need to crucify the flesh daily that we need to be in prayer to help the Lord ask the Lord to help us to overcome the deeds and the sincere desires of the flesh and then and then so that we are not to use our liberty as an occasion for the flesh first Peter 216 says as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as servants of God and so knowing this that we have been freed and and we're not going to use our liberty for an excuse to sin but what we're going to do is what? By love, serve one another. If we must be servants, if we must be a slave to something, because realize this, we have been bought with a price. Jesus Christ paid it with his precious blood. We have, been, we have not been redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but we have been redeemed. We have been bought out of the slave market to never be sold again by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And then so in a sense, we are his bond servant in, in, in the sense that, that he is our Lord, our Savior and our Lord. So if he is our Lord, then, then he has dominion over him and we are his servant and so then if we must be servants then we are to serve to be servants one to another in love therefore we are to walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh the bible says in first john 2 2 and 6 it says that if we say that we are in him, talking about Christ Jesus, then we ought to walk as he walked. That we ought to live as he lived. Is that, and the way that he lived, it was that he came for one purpose. That was to do his father's will. That, that he would glorify his father in heaven. That, that he would be obedient to his father in all points. So it should be our desire and our liberty since we have been set free that that through the power of the Holy Spirit that if we would be led by the Spirit, if we would walk by the Spirit, if we would yield to the Spirit that, that we could walk in liberty and freedom and, and, and that this is a, a wonderful liberty that we have. And so we should be able to celebrate our freedom. Free from the condemnation of sin. Free from the habit and dominion of sin. We have been freed. And so let us walk in the spirit that we might not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. May God bless you and keep you.